Vascular access devices such as PIC lines or central lines are excellent tools that allow patients to receive life-saving treatments. But with the use of these devices comes an increased risk of developing a central line associated bloodstream infection, or CLABSI for short. It is important that strategies are implemented to stop any infectious agents from getting to the bloodstream through these devices. One of these strategies is the application and maintenance of sterile dressings over the device. This video will demonstrate the proper technique to applying a sterile dressing on a vascular access device. Dressings should be changed at least every seven days, or any time the dressing looks like it should be replaced. This could mean there is blood under the dressing. The edges are peeling up. The dressing isn't applied properly. It's not labeled with a date. Or anything else that makes you concerned about the efficacy of this dressing. Before you can change the dressing, you'll first need to gather the supplies. Chloroprep applicators come in various shapes and sizes. At least two applicators will be needed to apply the dressing. Do not use the small one milliliter applicator as it will not be adequate to clean the area thoroughly. There are also a few options for the dressing itself. This video will demonstrate the use of the Sorbaview dressing, but the process is the same for the Tegaderm IV Advance. They are both three-piece dressings that act as a securement device as well. They are composed of the shirt, or the large windowed portion, the pants that fit in the bottom of the shirt, and the belt that secures the line over the pants. It is also possible to use a basic tegaderm for a sterile dressing, but these other options are far superior as securement devices to keep the line safely in place. Biopatch is a small disc impregnated with chlorohexidine. It has a foam side and a blue labeled side. The labeled side should always be visible or facing up. The foam should be in contact with the skin to allow the chlorohexidine to continually disinfect the catheter site. Obtain appropriately sized sterile gloves. You will also need to replace the microclave or the needleless adapter at the end of the line. So have a new adapter and flush ready, as well as a small chlorohexidine swab and the swab caps that should always be present at the end of every IV line. With the supplies ready, begin to remove the existing dressing. A chlorohexidine swab can be used to neutralize the adhesive and make removal easier and less painful for the patient. Remove the belt, then the pants, and finally the shirt, being careful not to allow the dressing to pull and dislodge the device. An orange securacath may also be in place to keep the line safely in the arm, but still be careful when removing the dressing. The securacath functions to hold the line in place. It anchors the device under the patient's skin and allows the device to be safely repositioned without the risk of slipping it out of position within the patient's vein. This is useful when cleaning the site because it allows for 360 degrees of disinfection. You will need to disinfect the area by scrubbing with your second chlorohexidine swab back and forth for at least 30 seconds. You can move the device as you disinfect around the entire area. Also be sure to disinfect the securacath itself and the hub of the catheter. When the 30-second disinfection stage is complete, you will need to allow time for the site to dry. Do not blow on it, wave your hand over the site, or do anything else to speed this process along. That will only potentially introduce bacteria to the disinfected site. Instead, take this time to prepare your supplies. Create a sterile field by opening your dressing and gently laying it on the table. Drop the bio patch onto the field. Don the sterile gloves. Test the site to make sure it is dry. Touch the arm with your gloved finger, not at the insertion site, but somewhere near it that you had disinfected. If it is dry, you can proceed with the dressing application. If it is not, continue to wait. If you try to put the dressing over wet chlorohexidine, it will likely not stick, but it could also likely cause a rash to form under the dressing that will be itchy and painful. If the site is dry, begin by putting the bio patch in place. There is a slit in the patch that allows it to wrap completely around the catheter at the insertion site. The foam should be in contact with the skin, and the label should be facing up, visible through the dressing. When placing the bio patch, position the slit to be in line with the catheter, as if Pac-Man is going to eat the line. This way, when you remove the dressing, the bio patch will come off smoothly. If the slit is positioned opposite the catheter, when you pull the dressing up from the bottom, the bio patch will still be wrapped around the catheter and potentially cause you to accidentally pull the catheter out of place. Even if you manage to keep the catheter in place, you'll now need to put extra effort into removing the bio patch from around the catheter. To make every dressing removal easier, make sure to consistently place the bio patch slit in line with the catheter. 
the shirt portion of the dressing goes on first. It is the large piece with the window in the middle. Position the dressing so the window is over the insertion site. You should be able to see the bio patch, secure cath, and if possible, the winged hub of the catheter in the window. Do not stretch the dressing over the site, but lay it firmly in place and gently press on the edges to adhere it to the skin. If you stretch the dressing, it will apply more pressure than you want to the catheter, and that could potentially cause device-related pressure injury. The slit at the bottom of the shirt needs to be above the pinch clamp. You will need access to the clamp, so make sure it is not covered by the dressing. If the winged hub of the catheter couldn't fit in the window, ensure it is at least covered by the shirt. The securement device aspect of this dressing is only truly effective if the hub is contained under the dressing. The dressing may have to fold in on itself in order to keep the pinch clamp accessible, and that's okay. Just ensure that the dressing still creates a continuous seal on the patient's skin, so there is no path for infectious agents to get under the dressing. The pants should be placed under the catheter. Lift it up and slide the pants up over the end of the shirt. This should cause the dressing to fully surround the exposed catheter. Finally, the belt is a strip of dressing or tape that should be placed over the seam where the pants meet the shirt. You will also need to date and initial the belt. It is very important that the dressing be dated. If your patient has a dressing with no date written on it, assume that this dressing has been on too long and replace it with a new one. With the dressing in place, it is time to replace the microclave end cap. You'll need a new end cap, a flush, a small chlorhexidine swab, and swab caps. Begin by dropping the chlorhexidine swab on your sterile field. Next, open the end cap to reveal the needleless port. Attach the saline and prime the cap by flushing it with saline. Before you begin, make sure the pinch clamp on the catheter is closed. Now, remove the existing microclave. With your swab, clean the end of the microclave for 30 seconds. Remove the new primed microclave from the package, and in the process, remove the blue cap from the end of it. Attach the microclave to the end of the catheter. Open the pinch clamp. You should now be able to aspirate a small amount of blood. The mannequin arm is not primed with blood, so it doesn't show blood return in this video but you should be able to get it in an actual human being. Then, flush the catheter using the push-pause technique. Close the pinch clamp and apply a swab cap to the end of the catheter. When the line is not in use, always have the pinch clamp in the closed position. This provides positive pressure in the line that keeps blood from entering the end of the catheter and forming clots. The vascular access team will round on pick, central, and midlines daily, and if necessary, they'll change the dressing. But there is no reason that a dressing must be changed by the vascular access team. If a patient's dressing is outdated, damaged, or dirty, every nurse should feel confident that they have the skills, knowledge, and supplies to safely change that dressing in an attempt to keep their patient safe and keep the catheter viable to deliver life-saving medications.